Hello and welcome to another episode of Laravel Tips, Tricks and Packages, a useful video series where I show you some of the features and packages that you can use within Laravel. So in this video we're going to look at how we can create fake data with inside of Laravel. I'm going to be doing this using a design pattern called the factory pattern. I'm not going to go into too much depth about the factory pattern in this video, but basically a factory pattern like in real life, a factory produces something, it makes something. So in a default Laravel application, we actually have a factory out the box that we can actually take a look at. If you come under database, factories, we can see a user factory here. And all this does is return a new user model. As you can see here, it's also injecting a service called Faker, which is using the Faker library. And this allows you to create fake data, such as names, email addresses, and also things like addresses. And I do have another video on my channel covering that more in depth, the Faker library. So I'll link to that in the description if you're interested in seeing what other methods the Faker library can provide you. So all this factory does then is when you call it, it generates you a new user model with the data filled in for you. So as you can see here, I just have a very basic Laravel application. And on this page, I simply list out the user's name and the user's email. But sometimes we need more data to work with, especially during development and maybe even testing. It's good to have some fake data in there so we can see how the application is going to look and how it reacts. So now that we have the factory defined and our user factory is already defined for us out the box, so we don't need to create it. We can actually now call this method. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can do it in our seed files if your application is using seeders. But we can also call it from the command line with Tinker. So over in our command line, if we just call php artisan tinker, and this puts us into the tinker shell, now we can just actually call our factory directly and tell it how many we want to create. So we can just say a factory, and we want to call our app user factory. And then as a second parameter, we can tell it how many users we want to create. So I'm just going to create five for this. And then finally, on the end, we just call the create method. And then we can just run this. You can see the output here. It's created these new app user models, and it's filled in the details for us. And those details have been created using this factory here. So now over in our application, we just give it a refresh. We can see now we have all our fake data in there. So this is a super simple way to populate your application with some test data so you can try things out. So to use this method within a seeder, it's the exact same command that we just did in our tinker. So I'm just going to create a new seeder so I can show you how this actually works. So if we just exit out of uh, tinker on our command line, and we can do a php artisan make seeder. And I'm just going to call this user table seeder. And now under database seeds, we'll have our new user table seeder here. And under run, just like we did on the command line, we can call factory. And we want to call our app user factory. And this time I'm going to say I'm going to create 10 users. And again, we need to call that create method on the end. And now under database and seeds, our database seeder here, we can just call our user table seeder that we just created. So now every time that we run our seed command, it's going to call our users table seeder and then inside of that it's going to call our user factory and it's going to create 10 users so let's give this a try so we can do a php artisan db colon seed you can see that's run our users table seeder then over in our application if we give this a refresh you can see it's now created another 10 users for us to work with so that's two ways that you can create fake data so if you don't have a factory already for one of your models, we can create a quick skeleton using artisan if you wanted to. So we can do a php artisan make factory. And then we can call something like post factory, for example. Then over in our application, if we come with a database factories, we can now see we have an empty post factory already defined for us and already passing in faker. So we could just build this out and match our post model if you did have one obviously in your application. When you're creating new models and you think you're probably going to want a factory to use with that model, you can pass in the F flag. So an example would be PHP artisan make model and let's just stick with that post model. 
and we can do a dash F and that will create the factory for us automatically or you can also use dash A and that will create everything for you so that will create a factory a migration a seeder and a resource controller so I've shown you two ways that we can call our factory and that is in our seeder and tinker but you can also use the seeder in tests and it's the exact same process that we've used in our tinker and our seeder so you just call your factory which factory you want to use how many users you want to create so it's exactly the same with inside your tests as it is in the seeder and also as we did in tinker so the commands are exactly the same so you could create 10 users for example and then run a test to make sure the user count is 10. Now obviously that's a, a pretty basic test and probably a bit, little bit meaningless. But that just gives you an idea of how you can actually use your factories for your entire application and you only need to define them once under your database factories folder.